Despite what some of you may think, furries do not have a plan for world domination. We're not aliens, and we're not part of the Illuminati or any cult-like groups, but there are lots of things that you may not be aware of in the furry fandom or about the furry fandom. So, let's dive right into them. Believe it or not, the furry fandom has been around for about 39 to 44 years now, as of the 30th of August 2024 when this video goes up. In 1985, Judy Niver, which is one of the founders of the cartoon fantasy organization, hosted a room party which attracted a lot of people who were a part of what would end up being part of the furry fandom due to their involvement in the CFO. This eventually led to the first furry convention, which is known as Conference Zero, to be held four years later in Costa Mesa, California, which had a total of 65 attendees, slowly increasing year by year as it was hosted more and more often. Over the years, a lot of conventions started to pop up, which invited members of the upcoming furry fandom to come along who shared the same interests, which eventually allowed for the fandom to grow as more people got interested when hearing about this small community. Since this was also during the rise of the internet, virtual environments and games started to appear that allowed many people to communicate about the furry fandom or roleplay as their characters online, which happened to also be quite beneficial to the fandom's growth. But some of you may be thinking, where do furries get all their money from to enjoy their hobby? And aren't most of them suspiciously wealthy? Although I believe this just started as a stereotype, this is often too true. Most people in the furry fandom appear to work in the IT industry, or something related to tech, or generally in one of the four STEM fields. This is also what allowed rumours to be formed about furries running the internet, which is actually quite funny because to some extent, it is surprisingly accurate. If you look at these people dressing up in their silly costumes and think that they are uneducated, or that most lack high paying jobs, I think it may be time for you to reconsider how you think about most furries, or at least the ones who attend conventions. Because of the donations that furry conventions make to charities, it may not come as much of a surprise to you that furries are often involved in their local community. Over the years, there are always a few events which are reported on that state that furries in the UK and America are often involved in community events to either raise money or attempt to make people's days, as you can see in this image where fursuiters have set up a charity to bring healing power through joy to hospitals. Of course, there are many other sources to back this up, but the screenshots would be too big to display on this video, so I encourage doing your own research to see how much of an impact the furry fandom truly has on local communities and charities. Some of you may have heard that there was a rumour in the fandom a few years ago about the US Navy adopting a cooling vest made by a member of the furry fandom under the company name Easy Cooldown. Although this wasn't entirely accurate, there are sources online which show that there was a statement made that a few people in the US Navy who were stationed in Japan did order at least 10 vests. However, there has also been a statement from a spokesperson for the Army which suggested that members of the US Navy are permitted to buy this gear at their own discretion, but that it wasn't endorsed by any official guidelines or due to any contract that had been made between the US Navy and Easy Cooldown. At the end of the day, furries aren't part of some secret organization that controls the world. Although many people in the furry fandom may be part of large industries and help them run, they are just like any other employees who may have hobbies and interests just like any other person. So, I hope all of you have found this information useful, and I would also like to take a moment to say a massive thank you to everybody that has subscribed subscribed and supported me on this journey to 1,000 subscribers. I truly hope that all of you have a fantastic day.